Not for a moment. Not for a moment. Let's have a word of prayer. Could we do that? Just remain standing. Lord, we're just grateful to you. We are grateful to you that you are the constant one. You are the only good one. You are the only holy one. And God, we stand this morning, every single one of us, just to give honor and glory to you. You deserve more than we could ever give this morning. But everything that we have, God, we're leaving it today, Lord Jesus. We're just giving it all to you, everything we've got today. Everything we've got today. We honor you and we worship you. And God, I, above all, I know that the leadership of this church just wants your spirit to move and to change lives. And Lord Jesus, we ask you, we ask you today to, to let us be good listeners. Speak to us today, God. Speak to us today, God, so that we can reach out to a brother and to a sister, Lord Jesus, that needs you. And God, as we worship you, in Christ's name we pray. Just remain standing and sing out to him in Christ alone. You know, that's who we put our trust in, Jesus Christ.
let's do that whole verse again. No guilt in life. I love this. Listen, I live on this verse right here. No guilt in life and no fear in death. Amen? Ah, if you live on that, I want you to sing it loud out to him. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands, Jesus commands my destiny. No power, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever, can ever love me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. the praise team and Sister Paula a nice hand, if you will. Amen. Don't the praise girls look beautiful this morning? They always do, but so glad to have Sister Linda. She's been out, had some surgery on her leg, but what a trooper. She's here this morning praising the Lord. Amen. Now, before you're seated, we have a good problem this morning. We might be running out of chairs. So if you've got a pocketbook or you're, got, you're sitting in the middle of a row, maybe you can move down and leave the empty seats on the out, outside so some people can get a seat. And then you, you can be seated. Amen. It's good to see everyone this morning. We've had a wonderful conference. We are full. <laughs> we are blessed. And we've had so much fun. We've worn, we're tired. <laughs> but it's a good tired, as Brother Dave always says. And we just hate to see it in. Somebody said to me, we've worked so hard and anticipated this so much. And now it's here and it's over almost. But we have one more day today. And uh, so make sure you take advantage of everything that goes forth from this podium and this pulpit um, today. Um, this church, Spirit of Truth, uh, last Tuesday started its first Tuesday night class. And this coming Tuesday, we will be here at 7 p.m. And we'd like for you to come back and be with us. We call it bodybuilding. And some people didn't come because they thought we were exercising. <laughs> it's not It's not muscle exercise it's spiritual exercise and learning and building the body of christ so this coming tuesday please um, come out and join us at seven o'clock for the body building class <laughs> so we'd love for you to do that um we live we use stream and um we are, have been so blessed to be able to do this for um about a year or so, I'm not sure exactly how long. But how many of you have ever watched it? How many of you saw there was some, some difficulties still that we've been trying to work through? And this weekend, we fixed it. And, and sister, uh, but we're going to tell you what we need to keep it fixed. <laughs> so, Sean, can you come up here? Sean and Kevin work in the back room. They operate 
um, the equipment to be able, for us to be able to use stream so that you can see that people are watching this pro, uh, service even now. And so he's going to ex uh, explain to you why we need to continue and what we need to do it. Thank you. Um, just real quick, uh, every time Dave comes, he enlightens us with something else we neither need and what we're not doing. But uh, every time we get a little bit better and like uh, Pastor Kathy said, I mean, some of you that has watched it, it is a bit choppy and it's, it's hard to follow sometimes. So you lose a little bit of that. But um, David got us in touch with a, a few pieces of equipment. Tech, God bless technology on some things and um, what it's able to do. If you watch this week's um, services, you could see that it's much better. It's, it's more like regular TV that you would see out there. Um, unfortunately, one of the pieces is a borrowed piece currently, and it's around 300 bucks. So it takes money, obviously, to be able to do these things, um, but for us to be able to outsource and, and be able to get the word out to people to where it's pleasing to the eye and easy to watch, um, that's where we come in. So um, what, what I was willing to do, I want to come out here, and I mean, I don't do this very often, but I want to come out and let you guys know up front. I mean, for us to do this stuff, it costs money. Um, and I put my money and time in it as well. Um, but divvy it up however you will, but we need roughly about $300. So um, obviously, aside normal tithing, we'd like to ask um, that gift of whoever would be willing to um, to put up that money to where we could be able to get this piece um, on behalf of, of God and Spirit of Truth so we can get out and touch people that, that may not be able to come for whatever the reason is. Or, or people that, like our guests coming from all over, they may not be able to be here all the time, so it gives them the ability to be able to watch it as well. So um, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. We want to get as many people involved as we can. And obviously the, the social media and, and the technology means nowadays makes that possible in many ways. So uh, we appreciate everything uh, beforehand. And um, like I said, we encourage just giving um, on that behalf. So How many things we can take care of this real quick? David told me that if we get 12 people to give $25, it's taken care of. So there you go. Take a walk. <laughs> Raise your hand. $25 if you can help us. And this will buy this a piece of equipment. And you watch the television program, the Ustream, the mouth lines up with the words. And that's very, very important. It won't be choppy. It'll be beautiful. While... Um, Sean is taking care of that. If you would like to order CDs from the conference, stop by the table on your way out, and you can fill out a form, and we'll get those made up for you and uh, get them to you. Well, there's always tax. <laughs> Do, who else needs one? Okay. Oh, well, bless you. Thank you so much. Now, that was easy. Now, we're going to be able to... David, we got it taken care of. <laughs> Give yourselves a nice hand. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. We're going to collect them because... Um, just raise your hand, and Sean will come by and um, got them. Yeah. I wanted to say that this is Pastor's Appreciation Month. And how many of you appreciate your pastor? Amen. Yes. We think he's the best, don't we? Amen. Somebody asked me before church, what do you, you and Pastor want for Pastor's Appreciation Gift? And they said, you want money? <laughs> I said gift cards are always good. We eat out all the time. So gift cards are wonderful. So they're going to get us a Visa card, and we can just eat out as much as we want, <laughs> as long as that card has money on it. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping us to take care of this need, and uh, we appreciate you so very much. How many of you uh, enjoyed the conference? Yeah. Yeah. All of our Illinois people that stayed over stand up. We want to let people know that we appreciate oh, over here. They stayed over for this morning's service. So glad they're with us. So glad.
How many is, uh, this is your first time to, to be at this church? First time visitors. We're so glad to have you. How many, this might be your first time to ever meet Sister Annie McCray. Let me see your hand. Okay. Well, here's the deal before Annie comes. Annie sent us a box that had a bunch of product, product in it. That means CDs and DVDs and whatever's out there on that table. Now, we don't want to have to mail it back because it costs money to mail it back. And her suitcase is already overweight. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> we know that. So before you uh, leave today, stop by the table and take home some of Sister Annie McCray's product. I know it will bless you. Let's all stand. I'm going to give her a proper introduction now. This young lady has taken time out of her busy set schedule. She has two twin sisters, Whitney and Brittany. And uh, one of them, which one's getting married? Whitney's getting married this coming Saturday. And uh, Annie left all that to-do list at home and just to come and minister to us. And she's got to get back on that plane tomorrow and, and take care of all the stuff that she needs to in Mississippi for this wedding. But I thank God for this young lady. She's 31. That's how she says it, 31. <laughs> and she is so far beyond her years in, in ministry. And, and just you can just eat at her table, can't you? That when she spreads the word and brings the word to us, whether it's in word or in song, you're always full after you are in the presence of Annie McRae. So can you let her know that we love her right here in Ohio. Stand 
it. If you're a true fan, I believe it. If you're the life, I want to live it every single day. If you're the tour, I'm walking through it. If you're the word, then I will do it. If you're the life, I want to feel it. Yeah, I want to feel it on my face. If you're the way, hey, 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 yeah. If you're the way, hey, 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 yeah. I don't need nothing else. You're a girl all by yourself. If you're the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. thankful he knows your name. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. <laughs> he counts the stars one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything, of all creatures, great and small. And he knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. Thank you, Jesus. He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain and can't see the light of I know I'll be just fine, yes, cause he knows my name. Now I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. No, no, no. And I don't have all the answers to the questions of life. But I do know, I know in whom I have believed. He knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain and can't see the light of He knows my name And he knew who I was When he carried my cross He knew that I would fail him But he took the loss Because he knows my name Every step Every move that I make, I know I'll be fine. Oh, yes, aren't you thankful? Thank you. 
Amen. How many of you glad that the one that knows you the best loves you the most? The one that knows every detail, every failure, every flaw, every falling down, everything. He knows you best, but he loves you. In spite of it, whenever people, other people walk away because they don't want to put up with any more, how many know he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, he'll never abandon you, and it seems the theme of the service is continually there's somebody that has just come to the end of the road and they hit the wall, the bottom fell out, and that's when the Lord appears and brings forth the victory. So if you're at that place right now, you're in a good place for God to start you all over again and bring you new life. Aren't you glad we're in a place where we can just be healed and restored and fixed and, and get a new beginning? Can we just lift our hands and thank God for that this morning? Father, we can't thank you enough, and as was spoken in the prayer service earlier, no matter how awesome the praise, no matter how much we give it, and we want to give it our all, we still fall short of giving you the kind of glory you deserve. But we ask you, Father, today to finish the healing process in some that have been struggling for a long time. Because you do know our name, you can call us again, and you will, if we'll respond, and you'll bring forth an answer and a victory. We praise you, Father, today, because we know that ears are going to hear and lives are going to be restored. Problems are going to be solved that have been a lifetime in the making and victory is going to be established today because of the present truth and the work of God that's alive in this room. We thank you, Father, because we know it's beginning now in Jesus' name. Can everybody in agreement say, I'm ready? ready. Say it with me. I'm changing. I'm I'm not what I used to be and I'm not yet what I'm going to be. But right now I've got an on-time God working on the inside, doing his awesome work in my spirit and in my life. For those of you that have been a part of the services, we've had the greatest in singing and just ministry, not just songs that came forth, but I felt a connection, people receiving the word of the song. Sometimes the song is prophetic, sometimes it's healing, sometimes it's life-giving, sometimes it's laughter and joy, but we need all of that in the body of Christ, and I thank God for that which has been given. I also realized that the price gave us a word that when the prophet of God, even the prophet of God, was confined in prison, God spoke a word and said, go ahead and buy property for the future, and I'm going to restore. How many know that has been the, the theme of what God is doing? We'll be sharing more about that in the weeks ahead, but I'm very thankful for the word of God. Last night, we found out that we've got treasures in our earthen vessels. We found out that there's a miracle worker inside of you, and if you'll loose him and let him go, we can change the world, and we can bring the victory to humanity that's been a long time in the coming. So just rip off your garments today. Let's let the Superman shine. Is that okay? And let his power be revealed. I don't know how to say this any other way, but I have a very, very lifelong dear friend that's with us this morning, and it's not about being together for a long time. It's not about knowing uh, him and having him know all about us. It's the fact that he knows God, and God has given him a word, and that word is going to set us free this morning. I know you honor, and I know you appreciate, but can we do it one more time, all the way from the great state of Oklahoma? The man of God is going to come and bring us what God has given to him. Let him know we love him. Leo Calvin Price has been around the world, but he's in Washington Courthouse this morning, and we're going to benefit by the ministry God has given. We love you. We honor you. We respect you. We want to hear what God has to say. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap for him. Come on, dude. Amen. Aren't you glad for God's presence? You can be seated. We didn't come to entertain you this morning. We came to worship God with you. Because he is king and Lord over all. Can you say amen to that? And so we're thrilled with what the power of the Spirit of God is doing here at the Spirit of Truth. The con- conference has been just wonderful. And God has blessed us. I'm thankful for his grace and his mercy. Can you say amen to that? The Bible says he's an ever-present help in the time of need. I don't know whether you have any needs this morning. But I have some needs. But I'm glad he's a constant and he's ever present. Can you say amen? Amen. Give Paul a great big hand as she comes to minister to you in song this morning and as we worship God together. Behold the lamb who sits on the throne. I'm sure glad that lamb takes away the sin of the world.
He's the love that I'm after. The only thing that matters to me. He's in my sorrow and sees my tomorrow. And his ear is all. Behold the land I will worship Seated high upon the throne Behold the land I will honor And I'll glorify this worthy He's a God who is faithful. His name a tower proven to be strong. He's why I'm standing. My story's ending. He's the passion that compels me to get up and go on. Behold the land I will worship Seated high upon the throne Behold the land I will honor We honor you this morning And glorify this word why church because he is holy and he is marvelous he's my strong tower and righteous he's the he is the living word he's been my sacrifice he surely
church. He's surely the restorer of this messed up life. I think sometimes you don't even know the half of what God's done. What God's done for me. And I am so grateful. I have made this statement, Sister Kathy, before that I shouldn't even be in ministry. But do you know, and I'm sure that's how some of you feel. But that's who Jesus called. Is those unlikely people that can step in, in, into a place with him. And miracles work. Brother Josh, from the inside out. From the inside out. I'm grateful for that. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise one more time. Say it again. There we go. <laughs> it took a miracle <laughs> to hang the stars in place. It took a miracle to hang the world in space. But when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love. And grace. Amen. Amen. Amen to God. Aren't you glad for the presence of the Lord? What a wonderful conference we have had. Pastor, it's an honor. You and Kathy do allow Paul and I to be a part of what the Lord is doing through Spirit of Truth. Uh, we don't take this lightly. We don't take this lightly. We understand the giftings of God. So we're honored to be here and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Uh, Friday, uh, Thursday night, pastor preached. I, I don't have a good memory about a lot of things, but, but about ministry, I have a pretty good memory. But he preached on restoration, restoring. And it rolled over in my mind what Paul said, that God, through Jesus, restores the dead to life. Dead to life. The valley of dry bones was dead. But God caused life to come. There was no other way life could come but by him. And so I'm thankful for that restoration. I'm thankful for the storehouse that he replenishes every day. And his mercies are new every day. Can you say amen? And then Saturday uh, even afternoon, the communion service, those of you there that were here, God moved in such a special way. And Pastor talked on ministry and ministering. And I, I came away from Saturday afternoon th re thinking, if you don't stand up on the inside, you'll never stand up on the outside. Amen. Amen. I believe that. And boy, last night, those of you that weren't here, wow, you need to get the CD and, it'll, and uh, my book. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> <laughs> I just kidding. I, if 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 I, yeah, Paul said, please, somebody's buy his book. Uh, uh, no, if if you don't have any money but to buy uh, buy anything this morning, uh, Sister Annie has a table back there, but still buy my book. No, I'm just kidding. I got to get off of that. Uh, Paul and I would both say to you, if you don't have any money to buy one thing, you buy Annie McRae's stuff. You know, um, you said that just like I told you to. You did. Amen to God. <laughs> Paul said, if you buy Annie, see, that's my book. She said, if you buy any CD, Paul will give you one of my books. So. This is not working out like I planned at all, man. <laughs> Amen to God. Uh, may I make a departure just before I um, 
go to my text and, and minister just a little bit this morning. I, I feel rather somewhat in, inspired and, and want to do this. Uh, this is pastor's appreciation. And I, I know you appreciate him as, as we do and as his family does him. We, we love Pastor Don. And I call him Bishop because that's what I believe he is um, in, the, in the church. And uh, he doesn't take that term lightly or, or misuse it or abuse it. But uh, we love him. I, I appreciate him. This is pastor's appreciation. Uh, I know we didn't, any of us come prepared, but um, uh, Raven, I'm going to kind of designate you, and you don't even know what I'm going to designate. <laughs> but you just shake your head yes. Okay, that's good. <laughs> but uh, and, uh, next week, I'd like for you to bring he and Kathy something as pastor's appreciation uh, for them. Um, if you're not here, you can send it to them. We're uh, we're going to write a check after the service and, and give it to you before we leave. But Raven, I'm, uh, stand up, let everybody see who you are. If they do not know who you are, this is Raven. Amen. <laughs> and maybe collectively, all of us as a church can give it to Raven, and then she can present it to Pastor and Kathy. Um, that gives you time to prepare and, and make preparations because they're worthy of our support Amen. and worthy of double honor. And so I want you to be encouraged to do that. Can you say amen? Would you do that with us? Amen. And uh, w if, we, if we lived here, we would attend church here. Uh, amen. That's the truth. And I don't say that lightly because I really believe in that. Um, are you pointing toward heaven or are you wanting to say something? You're pointing to me. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're a mess. You know what? Um, the last time we did sit down with them, they had just had a big flood in their house. And uh, we couldn't go downstairs and do anything because the carpet was all wet. Well, I thought those days were gone, and they were until uh, another flood came in a different way. But, yeah, there's still water and, and carpet and, all, and, and plumbing and washing machines. And I just want you to know that we don't always know. That's the truth. What's going on. And they don't share a lot of their personal things with you. And uh, I am so sorry if I'm embarrassing you. You just please forgive me. But we got there that first week, well, both times. And as close as, as Leo and Donna, and I know Pastor Don would tell Leo if he really was in serious need, and I know, I understand that. But we get there, and we don't have a clue of all of, of the things within your pastor's and First Lady's home. And so I just want to encourage you, don't... Just look, and Kathy, you look mighty fine this morning. I'm just going to tell you that right Amen. now. Amen. Yes, she does. But don't just look at the outside when and they're Pastor standing looks on suave the stage. And, debonair. and he does. And don't just look at that, but look at beyond that. Amen. That's a good word. And take care of your pastor and his wife because they deserve it. They will never tell you those things, not even us. And I got to say one more thing while I'm at it. I figured that. <laughs> Sister Kathy touched my heart last night as she introduced me. And I just want to tell you how grateful I am to have a friend. Amen. To have a friend. You can't call just anybody. You can't just call anybody. I remember someone asking what the definition of love was, and, and a little child said it best. He said, love is when your name is safe in my mouth. Amen. Kathy, your name is safe in my mouth. And you know what? I know that my name is safe in her mouth. And you, that's the kind of people that you have that you are following. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm finished. Thank you. Amen. I was going to say all that, but that last part. 
I think we need the attitude of the of the uh, boy who was playing in the Little League and a man stopped by to watch the Little League baseball game. And he asked one of the youngsters what the score was. And he said, uh, we're behind 18 to nothing was the answer. And the man said, well, I must say, you, you, you don't look discouraged. And the little boy said, discouraged? Why should we be discouraged? We haven't come to bat yet. I don't think the church has quite come to bat yet. And 18 to nothing is nothing. Amen to God. Let's pray. Father, we're about to break bread. I would not even begin to attempt this without coming before your presence first. God, I thank you. I ask you to put a guard on the lips of my mouth that I say nothing that does not bring you honor and glory. Let everything that comes from this point forward, God, be of such strength and such power and such weight that it will change our lives and we cannot leave this room the same way we walked in. And for that, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. And everybody said, Amen. Words of an old song. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood power in the blood would you over evil a victory win there's wonderful power in the blood would you be free from your passion and pride there's power in the blood come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide there's wonderful power in the blood would you be wider much wider than snow there's power in the blood sin stains are lost in its life giving flow there's wonderful power in the blood would you do service for Jesus your king there's power in the blood there's power in the blood would you live daily his praises to sing there's wonderful power in the blood I think sometimes in, and nobody loves music any more than I do, but sometimes I just have rapport because the words set you free. I take Paula's song, Behold the Lamb, and I take it out to the side. I can't, and I want to say this in the most delicate of fashions, I can't get her voice out of my head. <laughs> I want that to sound as glorious as I can possibly make it. <laughs> but when I hear her sing it, I, I believe she believes that. But the words, Behold the Lamb of Zion who taketh away the sins of the world. Sometimes we need to think about what we're saying. And then other times we need to think before we say it. To glean what God has in store for us. I want to minister to you this morning we're going to talk about some things and I'm going to beg of you to indulge me for a few minutes while I lay some foundation because I think at the end we'll be grateful that we were able to see what the Lord has put into my spirit I hope I can give it to you the way I sense it in my heart the Encyclopedia Britannica usually prints out a couple of sets of or a set of books every two years but in 2010 they put out their last 32 volumes. They will never be any more printed in that fashion before. It was a massive collection. It took 14 years to collect all the information to produce it. Let me give you just some statistics that will impress you on your minds. It took 200 advisors, 300 editors, 4,000 contributors, over 100,000 entries, $34 million, and 43 million words. In the last pages of that work of the 2010 32 volume Encyclopedia Britannica, one of the editors, editors had the audacity to conclude herein, he said, contains the entirety of human knowledge. I read that and I paused and I wrote in my own personal notes, excuse me, 
Encyclopedia Britannica, but there's another book. <laughs> that to say that 32 volumes could contain the works and the knowledge of humankind would be almost embarrassing had a person looked in the mirror to be able to say that. Because there is a greater one who has written time and time again and spoke to us. I prayed the other day in my devotions. I have devotions that I, that I go through every morning and I try to make sure they're not ritualistic. I try to make sure that they're not memorized. I try to be sure that I am cognizant of everything that I'm praying and, and that everything about it astonishes me and I, w I want to pray and I call people's names out, out loud and I, and I say, God, this is this person I, I sense needs this. And so I, in my devotions, I was praying. I said, I try to pray about my messages in advance before I even know what I'm going to say. And, and I was praying the other day and I said, Lord, but so much of what I'm going to say, I'm repeating from other messages that I've preached or other notes that I've, that I've transcribed. And the Lord said to me, so what's the big deal? I've been doing that for 6,000 years. So if God doesn't mind repeating some things, just maybe we should hear one more time the glorious gospel of the redemption of Jesus Christ that sets the captives free, that heals the broken and mends those lives torn. Just maybe we ought to hear it just one more time. How great is our God. How marvelous are thy works. I was sitting and I, I pulled up the scripture and it be our text uh, partially this morning. Psalms 139 verses 14 and 15 which speak largely to me. They, I could not enumerate that enough. I could not enunciate every word so precisely that it would not take the firmer grip of my soul. And so I reread it every time. And David said, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. I got to tell you, when I read that passage of Scripture, I marvel. David said, I'll praise you. You see, the word praise institutes the connotation of gratitude. I've discovered some years ago that the opposite of faith is not fear, it's ingratitude. Because every time Paul talks about faith, he connects it with being grateful. Whatever things you desire, and then Jesus said, when you pray, be, be grateful, be thankful. Paul talks about being grateful. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And when he says fearfully, let me, let me just lay this into your thinking process. He's not talking about being afraid of as of being scared <laughs> as I have been as a kid. He does not talk about that kind of fear. The word fearfully means to respect. Yes. I am fear respectfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. Some time ago, I was in, a, in our home church in Oklahoma City where we attend church. And, and uh, on occasion, and I hate to admit this to you, but I know you won't tell anybody else outside of this room. But they, they have an, an atrium. In, in, <laughs> in this atrium, the screen comes down and I can see the message in the live auditorium. And, and I'm a note taker, so I like to lay my Bible out and my notes out right there close to me and just to my left is a Starbucks coffee that I can grab a little Starbucks and be anointed at the same time <laughs> and uh, on this particular morning they had communion and so they served communion out in the atrium and while they were serving communion I was I was writing some notes I had a great inspiration and I was writing it down and I spilled a little of the communion grape juice on my piece of paper right where I was writing and I brushed it off right quick and took a, a napkin and dabbed it because I wanted to absorb that. I wanted that absorbed so I could write my notes. And so I continued that writing and, and took my notes home with me and as it is on Monday I like to go through my notes and, and look and see if I can really understand what I wrote. Because sometimes I write in Egyptian hieroglyphics. <laughs> I'm maybe the only one in this room that does that. But, 
and I was deciphering it. Sometimes I discovered that if I hold the paper at an angle, I can really make out what I was saying. I looked down, and where the grape juice, the communion had spilled, the paper was changed. I could not change it back. It was irreversibly changed. And it hit me so strongly, I backed up from my desk and I said, that's what the blood of Jesus does. It was just grape juice. But the paper was irrevocably changed. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't wipe it away. I couldn't wash it away. It had indelibly linked itself to the paper. It had infused itself till you would have tore it in two. And from front to back, it was still stained with the communion which the blood of Jesus, once it's linked in your soul, cannot be separated cannot be torn out. You have been marked for the rest of your life. Somebody ought to shout praise God in this house. I kept those notes. As a matter of fact, I took a photograph and put it on my iPad. I don't even know how I did it, but I was able to. And so every once in a while I pull it out and look at that and remind myself that's what the blood did in my life. The paper never told me it deserved it. The paper never had any say in the matter. It was an inanimate object. It was nothing. But the blood changed the composure and the composition and that which was nothing before became something of significance. Somebody's going to get this going home. It was not the paper's ability to change anything. The, the paper could not have changed the communion. It could not have changed the grape juice. But when the grape juice touched it, it changed everything about it. And that's the blood of Jesus. Though I was hidden in darkness, the blood brought forth light. Because you can't separate Jesus from his word. Francis Collins, I'm gonna, we're going to show you a slide here at any time, uh, April, that you would like. Is, was director of the Human Genome Project of, and a co-mapper of the uh, human DNA. And he's the author of the book, The Language of God. You, you may have read it. I, it's one of my favorite books. I encourage you to get it by Francis Collins. It's called The Language of God. He was at a conference at John Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. The theme of the conference was, what does it mean to be human? And the reference was to the DNA, which is the book of life. And your DNA, your DNA, everybody in this room is filled with three billion bits of information. I want you to note first on the left-hand side as you're facing the screen that uh, uh, one of the slides that Francis Collins showed was the rose window of the York's Minister Cathedral in Yorkshire, England. It was created in the 17th century by Glazer. And, and he took the stained glass and he formed this over months and perhaps even years during the 17th century. And they imparted it into the cathedral there in Yorkshire. Beautiful, beautiful piece. This picture doesn't even get, make it have justice. If you ever get a chance to go see it, as I have, you'll enjoy it and be blessed. It was a masterpiece. The intricate work, I mean, you, to describe the intricate work is almost uh, un, un, uh, have the, I don't have the ability to describe the intrinsic detail that is found in it. But what it does show, it shows there has been a there has been a author, there has been a designer that took the time to filter through all the colors and create this masterpiece. And it is absolutely a gorgeous thing. It took him months, probably years, to do that. On the other side of that, that particular screen is another slide. It is a strand of human DNA. (laughs) 
there is a designer. I want this to soak in so I will do what it takes for you to master and understand. One piece, the rose is made by a man. But the other is made by God. That's just one slice of a cell of DNA that, control, that contains three billion bits of information about you. The color of your hair, the color of your eyes, even to the traits of your personality. I want you to get that. Turn to somebody and say, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, say it. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. The author, the designer that took time to design that is your father. Every hour... 180 million newly formed red blood cells enter your bloodstream every hour of the day. Every blood cell is made brand new every hour of your day. Yeah, you need to say yeah. The circulatory system, the arteries and veins and capillaries in your body are 60,000 miles long. There are 60 to 90 trillion cells in the human body. If you put the human cells back to back, they would go around the world four and a half times. And every one of these cells contains a nucleus, a library of the human DNA, which you are made of. Is it any wonder that David said, we are fearfully and wonderfully made? And I must say here, and I've I got to tell you with all honesty, I've not taken care of my life like I should have from the beginning of my, my, of my existence, but I've tried to do better. But we need to understand that God respects you so much and your humanity that you are because he made you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Allow me to broaden the scope here to go where I want to go. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 simply says this. You don't have to turn to it. I'll quote it pretty close to being right. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed within his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Let me give you the word for word translation from the original Hebrew of that verse of scripture. And Jehovah Elohim. Say Jehovah Elohim. This is really important. Every time you see the word Lord in the Bible, it comes from the Hebrew word Jehovah. It always means covenant deity. And Jehovah Elohim. Elohim is the word interpreted in the English God. It means creative deity. So in the first three words there, it is and Jehovah Elohim. And covenant deity and creative deity formed man. Before there was ever, ever an Abrahamic covenant, God had already covenanted with man. It's called the Genesis covenant. Make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And the devil is a creep and we have power over him this morning. You ought to shout in this house. Genesis 2, 7 is one of those things I have repeated here before. And the Jehovah Elohim, the covenant deity and creative deity, formed man from the erets in the Hebrew, from the minute particles of the totality of deity, and breathed within his nostrils that part of himself, and man became a living thing just like God. Let me tell you what God did. God reached inside of himself, pulled out God material, and he made you. But he just didn't reach himself to himself and pull out this God material and just throw it out there and man like star just sprinkled into existence. Let me tell you what I firmly believe that God did. If this is God's design, I believe that God took one cell and with his hand he began to detail three billion parts of information that made you who you are. it distinctly 
Exodus 25 and verse 8 takes us a one leap forward. Please remain with me in this. Exodus 25, 8. And I will let them make me a sanctuary, but I will dwell among them. In the Hebrew is I will let them make me a mikdash, a physical structure, but someday I will not dwell among them. The word dwell indicates mishkan, I will dwell in them. Mishkan. The root word is shikan. It's where we get the word shekinah. It's where we get the word glory. It's very important that we understand that when God made you in the beginning, so intrinsically did he design every intricate three billion parts of that cell in your body. Why in the world would he go to such intrinsic detail if it wasn't important to him? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 might give us a clue. Paul says in utter amazement, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of God and you're not your own, you're bought with a price? In the garden, God in detail formed every cell of the body. He inscribed in it that part of himself that nothing that the enemy could ever do, nothing that man could ever destroy. There is something of God intrinsically in every human being that has ever been born on this planet. That's why when you came to church and something got into your spirit that drew you to Jesus, you couldn't resist salvation. You had to give your heart to him. Because down in the intricate part of who you are, God was speaking to you. You ought to be shouting in this house. In the very essence of who you are, when you leave this building, you walk down the road, you get in your car, there's something inside you that's moving and stirring because it's the very handiwork of God in your life and it keeps reproducing itself. You can't run from God. You can't hide from God. You can't disguise yourself from God. He knows who you are. And the reason he knows who you are is because there's a trace of him in every human being on the face of the earth. That's why David, though I said, though I make my bed in hell, he's there. Though I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea, he's there. Whither can I go from his spirit? Why did he make man like he made it? Because someday he said, I'm not going to live among them. I'm going to live in them. And I'm going to have me a house and a tabernacle worthy of my presence. Satan came in and tried to devoid everything in the Garden of Eden. But God kept an intrinsic seed deep in the heart of every human creature that was ever born to this planet that the devil could not erase, that the devil could not destroy, that the devil could not disintegrate. And it stayed in every man, woman, boy, and girl. And the only reason you don't make the decision is because you choose on your own free will not to accept him. You're going to have to excuse me while I... Begin to feel my juices on this. Bought with a price. Therefore I glorify God in your bodies and in your spirit. When Jesus came, Jesus was born to this world. He was not born as Joseph's son. He was given to Joseph and to Mary. Within the first several weeks of a child's birth, the blood in his body or her body becomes the DNA of the father. Come on. Jesus would have never died. He had a perfect blood system. He gave his life. They didn't take his life. He had his father's bloodstream in him. He had his father's blood in him, his father's DNA. Every drop of blood that came out of his body did not disintegrate. It did not evaporate. It began to embed its way into the human culture that they that call upon the name of Jesus should in no wise be cast out but come to Somebody ought to shout in this house. 
I've traced my heritage back to Europe till they started hanging my relatives and I found out that's not the relatives that I want to hang with anymore. But I can trace my roots back now to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. I can trace my roots back farther into the book of Genesis where God made Adam. You can cut me today. I'll bleed the DNA of my natural dad. But you go down into the visceral of who I am, where the marrow of the bone is, where the blood is developed, and down in that spiritual essence of who I am. I am a child of God by rebirth. I'm a child of God by salvation in the blood of Jesus. I'm connected. Me. Connected. God, I, I don't understand that. I, I know me. I wouldn't have let me in. I mean, I don't understand how I got in. I, I don't understand how he would knock at my heart's door. I, I don't understand. I know generations that came before me. And, and I, I understand my roots and my nature and my makeup. I, why would he come to me? He came to me because there was that part of himself that he will redeem. The word deem is the root word of redeem. It means to signify. It means to nomenclature something. It means to call it, make it significant. And God came to me and said, Leo, there's something significant in you. I put it in you. You need to give your heart to me. And I have a choice to make at that very moment. I can deny him because I have free will. I can deny the God of the universe anytime I want to. I can shake my fist in the heavens and in the face of God because that's my free will. But if I want the life eternal that he's promised me, if I want that blood nature living in me, I say yes. I preferred to change my heritage. I know you can call me Leo Calvin Price, but the Bible says I have a new name written down in glory which no man knoweth but he that receiveth it. It's what John said in the Revelation. Jesus, God said in the Old Testament, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves, then would I hear from heaven and heal their land. And they're bought with a price. Christ was the blood of Jesus. Now, I, I must admit to a quandary here of why Satan didn't grasp the weightiness of crucifying Jesus knowing that blood was going to be shed. So much in that one cell that God made that he put himself in there. If God put himself inside that DNA, he also put his glory. The word glory comes from an old Hebrew word. It means weighty. It means just one word from God is weightier than all the words of the adversary and the natural man combined. Hmm. Down deep inside when my when my dad got born again, it was a cool thing. I mean, you know, my dad was a hard-drinking man. I, my, my uncles used to tell me, he said, your dad was just hard, hard, bootlegging, drinking guy. He would come by when, when uh, we, the church people would witness to him, and he'd look at them and said, I don't need any of that. I got, a, I got a hot rod. I got a four on the floor and a fifth under the seat. Five-speed. Okay. <laughs> and then Jesus came. Jesus came and redeemed his life. In 1993, the uh, U.S. government, Army Intelligence, did a, an experiment. They swabbed the mouth of an individual, took the, the blood cells, the white blood cells, and scraped it from the mouth of a person and put it into a test tube and set, uh, subterfuged it and separated it, put a lie detector on it, put it into another room, took the person whose mouth was swabbed of those cells, put them in a room, put them in front of the television, and showed them a movie full of highly emotional scenes. 
Every time that person reacted to an emotional scene while they were watching television, the cells in the other room were responding at the very same time. They thought, this is, this, is, this is wild, unusual. So they took those cells, put it in another part of the building, took that same person, showed him another movie with the highly emotional scenes, and when that person reacted, those cells down the hall and into another building responded at the very same time. You're not impressed yet. They took those same cells 50 miles away and two days later put them in another room 50 miles away and two days later showed that person another emotional scene and when that person responded, those cells 50 miles away two days later responded in the same fashion. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Now that's just human DNA. Some of you are in this room, your, your kids are halfway across the nation. Some of you, your children is maybe in a foreign country. But let me tell you, if you ever get born again, in your DNA, something changes. And don't tell me when you're born again that that DNA in your family somewhere is not affected by the power and the presence of God. They may not understand it. They may not even understand it or grasp it. But God's already at work in this room. That's why you're here, because we're of the same blood. We're of the same family. We're of the same DNA. And God's in the business of changing lives. Somebody say amen. amen. I pray now. When I pray for people, I say, God, that part of that DNA that's you, touch it, God. You touch it, God. Make them miserable if you have to. I can live with that. But whatever you do, God, don't let them stay the same. Because down inside them, there's something with you inside them, God. Don't let that get away. Don't let them lose that context. Don't let them lose that faith in God. That's why I keep, that's why I keep witnessing to my family. That's why I keep witnessing to people around me. Because there's something down deep in the essence of every one of us. In the visceral of your being where nobody else can see. That God knows who you are. Jesus shed his blood on Calvary. And he said this you do in remembrance of me. Every time you take my blood and eat my body. You remember that you're feeding something that can grow in you. Oh, you ought to be. I'm getting ready to close. That means I'm working on an ending. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Every person in this room has that part of that DNA in you. My dad, when I was born... I kidded my mom and dad. I was the last kid born to the family. Both my parents had been married before and they had children. And I was kidding my mom and dad. I was the oops child. We love you, but whoops. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. But when I came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, Jesus said to the disciples, you that follow me through the regeneration when I sit on the right hand of my father, I'm going to cause you to rule. The root word of regeneration in the Greek is palingenesia. It means not the recreation of an old you. It means the birthing of something brand new. Paul said in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In the Greek it is kinekotesis. It's an old word. It's not the reformation of an old. It's the act of creation of something brand new in you. In that one thing that's in you, that one part of God that's in every essence of your being. God's coming down. He's saying to you if you let me touch that, I'll recreate. I will cause to be renewed. I will cause to be restored. I will cause to be redeemed. Your life from destruction. My, my roots are coming out, my Pentecostal-ism. So I tell God, when you come, you make this your house. 
But it, however you have to do it, touch that part in me that's yours. I like the story of the Asian ma a man that wanted to sell his house. And then he decided, no, he wouldn't do that. But his neighbor wanted the house. And he came every day and said, I want to buy your house. Let me buy your house. And the man said, no, I don't want to sell it. He hounded him so much till the man said, finally, okay, I'll sell it. I'll sell it on one condition. That when I sell you the house, I put this nail over the door of the house, but I own that nail. The man wanted the house so much, he said, yeah, I'll I'll do that. You can own that nail. What is that? Several years went by after the man had sold the house and the other man had bought it. Finally, one day, the man said to himself, you know, I want my house back. I want my house back. But the man wouldn't sell it to him. But he owned that one nail. And he went out and got garbage from the garbage heap, came back and hung it on that nail because he owned the nail. He hung it on there every day until the man couldn't stand the stench anymore. And the man sold him the house. If you let the devil have one peg in your life, he'll hang his garbage there. Until you have to move. But if you'll dig down into where God has three billion bits of it, you don't know what you're capable of. You have no idea what God has in store in that three billion bits of information. You have no idea what God's about to give you. You have no idea what God's about to restore to you. You have no idea how your family's going to come to Jesus. But God's already got a plan for your life. And you're sitting here in this room acting like you're fearfully and wonderfully made and not acknowledging the King of Glory made you like you are. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Ah, oh, man. I mean, some of us have remind me of the man that looked in the mirror one morning and said, you dummy you, then hit himself in the mouth. He said, I don't take that kind of talk from anybody. <laughs> you need to start talking to yourself who you are. Listen, I traced my generation, I traced my genealogy back because I thought somebody had an inheritance somewhere for me. That's all I want, man. I want to find out. I didn't care about how their cross arms were or, or what kind of armor they had or what, or what baron they come from. I wanted somebody that had an inheritance. I didn't care because they were all dead. didn't mean nothing to me anyhow. Man, didn't find out until they, they hung them all. I mean, I traced mine back to Wales, and I said, no, I'm through with this. And then I began to realize I have another heritage. I, I have another bloodline. Why am I going to look back to that past and try to find something that's going to help me when what I have is inside me to change me irrevocably for the rest of my life? And somebody grabbed this. He said, my mercies are new every morning. He makes your blood cells new every day. He makes your life new every morning. You ought to get up shouting God, giving God praise and honor. David said, I will praise him for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. All I got to say to you is anything good come out of Visalia. <laughs> That's the Don raised in Visalia, California. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> they ain't nothing but Harley Davidson's and devil's angels up there. Hell's angels. But look what God did. Look what God did. God touched a mother and father. And their DNA was changed. I'm not talking about what you bleed today. Changed the DNA. and He didn't know it. But his life was already marked out. If you knew the plans I had for you. If you just knew the plans I have for you. I did not come to visit you for evil. I came to visit you for good. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I thank you, God.
Stand on your feet with me. How else can you stand? And then there's spiritual sons and daughters. People who get saved under ministries. Down the road, somebody you witness to, somebody you sing for, Annie, found Jesus. You became a spiritual son or daughter. You had no idea that they were going to build a church and be missionaries. Nobody knew Pastor Don, the people that you've influenced and lives that you've changed. I look at both of your sons and your daughters. The day you moved for the kingdom, their DNA changed. They had no idea that God was dealing with three billion bits of information. We can't even deal with a handful. But God, Tom, was dealing Donnie, God was dealing. April, God was dealing in changing the makeup. Your DNA said you look like your dad and look like your mom, but God says if you take my DNA, you can look like me. You can look like my sons and my daughters. I can take the deprived look. I can take the disparaging look from your face. I can take the, the anguish of your soul and I can give you a new look. I can, I can transform you. I can translate you. I can transmit you. I, 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 can, I, can do, I can transfer things to your life that you could never have had before. The Apostle Paul was changed so dramatically on the road we're being changed I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I thank God for what he's put on the inside and I say to that which is on the inside of me come to the surface because what I've got on the surface I don't like don't like it it's been ugly sometimes I know nobody in this room has ever been an ugly Christian but I have been sometimes you get ugly with people Sometimes you got up on the wrong side of the bed and hit the wall because the bed was too close. They asked the little boy, why did he keep falling out of the bed? And he kept saying, well, I, got, I was too close to where I got in. <laughs> How about moving in a little deeper with Christ? How about getting a little more involved? Well, Brother Price, you just, I just did this no payback. There's nothing, nothing in it for me. There's nothing in it for you? Just maybe God is... Just maybe he's just moving some of those three billion bits of information in your life and pour you out a blessing you could not contain. But ultimately, when you let Christ into your life, God had already built himself a temple, and you're it. You're it. Father, I thank you. I, I hope this congregation received what you imparted to me, God. When I look at this slide every day of my life, when I look at what you've created and what you've done, I know there was a designer. You are the master grand weaver of our lives. You have weaved a tapestry, God that I've only seen from the backside. I've seen the raveling and I've seen the distort. I can't understand it, but God, you're about to turn the tapestry around so we can see it from the front side. God, I thank you that you tore the veil of the temple in twain so that we could walk into the holy place because now you no longer dwell in a temple in Jerusalem. You dwell in temples here in Washington Courthouse. You dwell in temples in Columbus, Ohio. You dwell in temples in Colleen, Texas. You dwell in temples in Oklahoma City. You dwell in temples in New York City. You dwell in temples of every man, woman, boy, and girl across this world that has accepted you as Lord and God. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let us leave here like we came. Transform us. Translate us. Transfer everything from our lives, God, that would not been a benefit to us. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Paula, would you go to, or, oh, there you are. <laughs> you read my mind, thank you.
You were singing a chorus the other day, Paula, one we all know. I love you, Jesus. I love him because he first loved me. Get the praise team. Would you all come on up here? We'll just worship God together. I love him. I love him because he first loved me. And purchased my You love him, sing it like you love him. Come on, everybody, sing it out loud together. that I'm going to give. Pastor can come and do what he would like in just a few moments. But if you're tired of living where you've been living, if you're tired of the status quo, if you're tired of nothing having changed in your life, and suddenly this morning you know that it can change, that God, all he has to do with his finger is touch one of those three billion bits of information and change everything about your life. He can change your destiny. Your past is not your future. I don't know about you. I'm already down here. I'm already the first one here. So if you're waiting on me, you're backing up. We're going to sing this course again. But if you really believe that God wants to touch something in your life and never leave you the same again, I want you to get out of your seat and come and stand as close to your front as you can. And we're going to worship God this morning and let him do a work in our lives. Come on, let's sing it together. spoke to Abraham you know what God spoke to Abraham here's what he said to him Abraham here's what I'm going to cause to come out of your seed I'm going to raise up kings 
and priest. I'm going to raise out of you a nation that the whole world will tremble at. I'm going to bring out of you. Before any of us were ever born, Paul said this. Listen, Paul said, we are all the children of Abraham through faith. That means that God spoke to Abraham, touched the seed that was in Abraham, and translated it down 6,000 years of history. And we're in this room today because God touched Abraham's touched Abraham's seed. You didn't earn it. You didn't do anything to deserve it. It's called the grace of God. And God is touching you. Well, if he can do that in Abraham, what can he do to us and the next generations to come? If he can do that just with an emotional circuitry 50 miles away and two days later, do you not think God can touch your seed in generations to come and let the power of the Holy Ghost work in their bodies? You say to me, but... Brother Price, you don't know about the generations in between. It didn't make any difference to God. God said, Abraham, I'm going to make kings and priests come out of you. He may have to jump some of us, but he can jump into the right place and start it up where he needs to start it up. Can you say amen to that? I want you to put one hand on your heart and lift your other hand to heaven right now. We're about to have a change in the atmosphere. There's a paradigm coming. There's a shift coming in your life. And God wants to use you to do that. Are you ready for that in this house? I want you to pray this out loud with me. Say it out loud so you can hear yourself say it. Say, Father God, in the name of your son Jesus, I am not who I used to be. But I'm not what I'm going to be. So where I am right now, don't judge my future by my past, but touch me right now in the very essence of my being. Down deep inside me, touch that seed, God, that'll translate me and transform me so that I will not be conformed to this world, but transformed through the mind of Christ. Change me, God, and I'll be changed forever. Touch me, God, and I'll be touched forever. Move in me, God, and I'll never stand still again. So I'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody praise him in this house. Somebody praise him in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, It will be blessing and glory and honor. Let there be blessing and glory, glory. and honor and power forever. and glory and honor forever forever sing it be blessing and glory be blessing, be blessing and, and honor glory. glory and power forever one more time together let there be blessing be blessing be, be, be blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Somebody give him praise in this house today. Someone.